at a Glenwood residential hot air furnace. This is a multi-fuel Glenwood furnace. This is set up so that you can hook this directly into your ductwork. If you have a heat pump, if you have a, a regular oil furnace in your house or gas furnace or whatever you have, electric, you can hook this in conjunction with your ductwork. This is the blower box. The duct blower sits inside here. It's filtered air. And this is your return for your ductwork will go on this box on top of it and your hot going out will go up on top of here. This air, like I said, this is a multi-fuel boiler and so it has quite a bit of controls on to, to seamlessly have your oil burner come on whenever your wood or coal fire goes out so that your house stays warm without your, if you're away or, or asleep. Uh, <clears throat> This is your main power switch. All your electrical connections go into here. Once again, it's pre-wired just like the boiler. This is the thermostat controlled. Uh, the thermostat goes into this relay, which controls the wood and coal side of it. There's another one on the other side for the oil. You need two thermostats or a two-stage thermostat, either or. And those thermostats will be set uh, within about five to ten degrees of each other, so that if the one your room temperature in your house gets below, let's say if you have it set for 70 degrees and it gets down to 65, it'll assume your wood fire went out and it'll fire your oil burner automatically. Once again, forced draft, very high uh, combustion efficiency, very high heating efficiency. We did extensive testing on these furnaces using coal and oil as our fuel source. And in our testing, when they were clean from new, we could get 90% heating using coal and oil as a fuel and the reason we did that was because to get an accurate efficiency rating with when using wood as a fuel is really hard to do the reason is is because wood has a lot of variables in it moisture content type of wood uh, even the size of the wood even where it comes from in the tree makes a difference we found that every firebox full gave a different reading and it wasn't just a little bit off it was quite a wide range of very readings that we got. If your wood is very dense, like if it comes from the bottom of the tree, it would give a different reading than if it came from the very top of the tree. And so we discovered that to get a uh, an efficiency rating is basically a best guess when it comes to wood. Coal is much more uniform, oil is especially so, and so we use those two fuels as uh, sources for our heating efficiency and the fuel like that's it's a very accurate one. Forced draft, again thermostatically controlled. When your thermostat in your house is no longer cooling for heat, this fan shuts off and that duct blower shuts off. Uh, again, much smaller blower box, but this has a, a um, suction a, a flapper in here that the fan sucks open when it runs and falls shut when it is when the fan shuts off and. Um, effectively sealing off the firebox so that your fire gets no air so it can idle back. And then this is how you much you regulate. This is the sliding mechanism that regulates how much air goes in when the fan runs. The further open you have, the more heat you get, and um, of course the faster your wood or coal burns up. The, the further close you have it, then the slower it burns up, the less heat you get. So typically on this size furnace, we run it at about a quarter inch to three eighths inch open. For coal, you have to run it more like an inch open. Notice the form door to prevent warping. This has a um, nice cute little fire box, 24 inches long. You can get 24 inch long wood in there. This is also equipped with a domestic stainless steel domestic hot water coil. So that is op an option. These plates come out for burning wood, and when it burns wood, it blows air in on the fire, produces a an intense um, intense combustion of the wood, creates like a forge like fire in here. Which then, in order for the smoke to get out of the firebox, it has to come back through the fire to get reburnt. So you have your gasification occurring in here. Because it burns naturally instead of upside down, we can burn a wide variety of wood quality in here. Just remember that when what you put in here will determine what you get out as far as out the chimney. 
the higher the quality firewood you have, the better performance you're going to have. The lower the quality, the poorer performance, but it will burn it. It won't go out on you. That's one important thing to remember. In the back of the firebox, you see that plate there? That is actually a plate that closes off the combustion chamber for the burner. When the burner is asked to fire on a call for heat and there's no wood in here or coal, this door opens. This door right here opens and uh, the burner shoots in through that combustion chamber. Notice how far back it's set in there. It shoots in through that combustion chamber, comes out and heats up this area and goes up to the secondary heat exchanger to get out the chimney. That is how we get our high efficiency. That combustion chamber is con constructed of high temperature stainless steel so that it can withstand the high heat that occurs in that combustion chamber. When that burner is no longer running, this door goes back shut again automatically. And that pr protects the burner from the contaminants that occur when you're burning wood and coal. It keeps the nozzle and electrodes from getting loaded up with, with um, creosote or whatever else you might have in here from that. And <clears throat> that happens automatically. There's an actuator over here on this side that when the burner receives power to fire, this actuator opens. It starts turning and rotating. And when that flap opens up the whole way, there's an end switch in this in this actuator that closes and fires the burner. That way the burner cannot fire unless that flap is completely open. That keeps the burner from running uh, without being able to have access to the firebox and creating a potential fire hazard. If you notice, this is an AFG Beckett oil burner. It's one of the most it's one of the simplest and most efficient oil burners in the market as far as ease of uh, ease of servicing. Parts are readily available for them. We found them to be very reliable and the Beckett company is out of Ohio. Again, American made and very great people to work with. And we really like their burners. My, my manufacturing theory is keep it simple. And this fits, this burner design fits right with that manufacturing philosophy. The simpler you have it, the less trouble you, potential trouble you have. Again, this is your chimney exit. Uh, the 2850 through the 3050 models, they use an 8 inch chimney and the ones larger than that use a 10 inch chimney. If you look, you can see how heavy, heavy duty our construction is. Notice the combustion chamber has a firebox, or I mean a stainless steel body, and it has fins welded the whole way around. And the fins welded around there do two things. Number one, it greatly strengthens that combustion chamber. Number two, it helps to pull the heat off of it very, very fast. It acts like a radiator. And this heat gets trapped in here in these fins, and the air blowing around it through the duct fan just radiates it off very rapidly. Protecting, once again, protecting the steel and maximizing efficiency. The firebox for the wood side is constructed the very same way. We have fins on the sides, the top, and also up in here. And once again, for the same reason, strengthens the firebox, plus gives you high heat transfer, very fast heat transfer. And then these are the secondary air tubes that the heat goes back through to get out the chimney. And they're also um, helped with the high efficiency that we can achieve with these Glenwoods. Once again, remember 90% heating efficiency tested. This is our secondary heat exchanger here. Notice we use spiral baffles. The heat that's generated from the secondary combustion comes up through from the firebox, right in this area right here. Because air is being injected right below it, it produces oxygen for recombustion of the gases in the smoke, producing, of course, extra BTUs. And then to collect all those BTUs, we actually force that hot, those hot gases to rotate in this tube by using this baffle. If this baffle wouldn't be in, it could go straight out through the middle. You'd have elevated stack temperatures. But by have, forcing it to spin in here, it forces it to spend more time in the tube because your, your air velocity is staying the same as if it would be going straight out through the middle. But because it's spinning, it's spending more time in the tube, allowing for faster heat transfer. Plus also this baffles the sender so that it forces the heat out to the outside edge for faster transfer as well. With these things in, this makes 15 to 20% increase in efficiency as with them out. For cleaning, 
about once a month, you're going to take, shut your fire down, take some, some welding gloves or some, some other gloves, a vice grip or something, and grab a hold of these things and pull them out. You may have to twist them. You're going to knock them on the floor. It's going to be dry and dusty. It's going to clean out all very nicely. You run this tool through, twist it, and bring it right back out. This tool has a flat spot in it so that it's not quite as hard to push through. Do that for all six of them. The, the 28 and the 2950 have six of these tubes in. All the other ones have all the, all the other ones have eight. A little bit about this bypass yet. Look like I like I said before. The chimney draft is pulling everything out right above this firebox door up into the secondary heat exchanger. Depending where your fire is at and its combustion process, the chimney draft pulling everything towards the door could create a scenario where when you open the door, the smoke could billow out in your face. Not a nice thing at all in your house basement or anywhere, period. So, to prevent that, you'll pull this out Slowly open the door, and what that does is it bypasses this heat exchanger up in here and allow, opens up an area in the back at the top of the firebox so that the chimney draft pulls everything from the front to the back and out the chimney. That prevents smoke from building up in your house and making filling the stove an, an uncomfortable chore. And then when you have your fire tended, you close the door, Shut that and you got your back to your high efficiency mode. This is a, a one inch rope gasket, it's fiberglass so to withstand the high temperatures that we get from the burnt, the high firebox temperatures. Because it's fiberglass, over time these fibers here can actually get so hot that they melt together and get hard and you don't have the soft spongy feel to your gasket on the front side. Because of this thick gasket, you actually have four sides to this gasket. When this side gets hard, you can turn it a quarter turn and slide it back in again. When that side gets hard, you can turn it a quarter turn and slide it back in again. It's very easy to install, remove and reinstall. And um, you get four times the life out of your gasket that way. We want you to have a tight door seal. We don't want you to have potential trouble that could come from leaking doors. And so we have a, two things to do that. One is just like I explained, is this gasket. The other thing is this door latch arrangement. Notice how we have it on a taper. See that, that's a taper. This is on a taper. Now the door is tightly sealed. As your gasket wears, like I just explained, you can push this handle on down here and it'll continue to keep the door sealed tight until you de deem it's time to get the gasket flipped. So the power... we're, burning, we're burning coal then. These plates that I took out at the beginning go back in for burning coal. These tabs go in front of the grate, which are, can you see right in here? They lay in right in on the, on the front of this grate frame right here. You see the tab sticking up there, right there, and right there, and <clears throat> they keep the plate from falling front. These tabs keep the plate from falling in. And so you want to make sure you get these things installed correctly. Notice the plate is shoved the whole way over to the left side. You lay it in here the whole way and then slide it to the right. And there's an ear on this plate right here that locks it so that you can't push it in. So you hit it with a shovel when you're shoveling coal, it don't matter. And then this plate goes in, lays on top of these two ears, just like that. This door goes shut, this plate goes up against here, and now the air flows from this fan down through this passageway down here into the ash pan. There's, a, there's an air slot in here that when you switch from burning wood to coal, you have to make sure it's open. Now you're set to burn coal. And now it brings the air up through the grates from the bottom, which is important for burning coal. And so that's all it takes to switch from wood to coal. Very simple. It'll take you two minutes and you're all set to go. Here's your ash pan. The amount of ash that we get out of this thing burning wood is phenomenal. When you're burning good wood, this can last you for up to three weeks. 
this ash pan. Notice the size. It's not very big. It's only 24 inches long. It's only 4 inches deep. It's about 12 inches wide. So that amount of ash won't even fill a 5-gallon bucket. And that's about what you'll get out of it when you're burning good wood. Without coal, you're going to empty it about every other day. Coal makes a lot more ash. So <clears throat> notice how easy it is to carry it. Got handles here on either side. You can just pull it out, take it out to your ash disposal site and dump it and slide it right back in again. Okay, very convenient. And again, all the doors are made the same way with this bevel latch. And here again, you have this seal here. Because this is on the ash pan, this doesn't get as hot. This will not be need to be turned as long as frequently as the other one. Firebox door and the top door. Again, we have this this um, tapered latch. The grates, very heavy duty grates. These are called finger grates. These are the fingers. They're made out of five inch thick steel, inch and a half wide. The rails underneath them that these are welded to is one inch thick by two inches tall. It's almost impossible to destroy them grates when you're burning wood. If you burn a coal fire, you want to make sure that you have two inches of ash on top of your grates for when you start a coal fire because a coal fire gets very, very hot underneath and that will, it can actually get white hot and there's no, no material aside from ceramic that can withstand that kind of heat. So you want to make sure it's insulated well with ashes so that it protects that grate from that white hot temperature that can get, and other than that, the grates are pretty indestructible. Also, another thing you need to remember for burning coal is that we need secondary air across the top of the firebox so that we don't get potential gas buildup in the firebox. And to keep that from happening, we have these plugs in the back here that must come out. Just take a flat screwdriver, they're electrical knockout plugs, and, uh, and leave that open for burning coal. <clears throat> that will allow air to get the dra chimney draft to pull air through here to keep the gas, uh, dangerous gases from building up in there as well as um, while, while, not, while not feeding your coal fire. For burning wood, they must be in, otherwise your furnace will overfire. So in with wood, take a flat screwdriver, knock them out for burning coal. That's simple. What is the warranty on this unit? These come with a 20-year guarantee against firebox cracking, failed wells. The warranty is a non-prorated warranty. That simply means that if you have a claim in 10 years, why well, uh, we don't say you pay half the bill and I pay half the bill because your warranty is half expired. That would be called a prorated warranty. A non-prorated warranty, if you have a claim in 19 years, 11 months, and 29 days, you call me up and uh, or call your dealer up, they, they start the process of filing the claim and then we start the process of repairing it. You would get the same warranty as if you had just gotten it the day before. Sounds like the best warranty in the market. There's no other warranty that I know of that can compare to that. Thanks, John. You're welcome.